Hi guys! <laughs> I thought I'd jump online because I'm doing a portrait at the moment and our task at the moment is looking at a colour portrait. So we started uh, earlier in the week, I did a post where I talked about doing portrait photography. So task 11 is to get yourself a colour portrait. Now it is a self-portrait but it's up to you if you want to use another model, okay, someone else in the family. Um, but that photo is going to be really crucial in um, directing you with your painting and we're bringing lots of the skills together now because we're on task 11 and 12. 12 is the actual painting itself. So task 11, just to cover that quickly before we get on to painting, the photo when um, I'm talking to my students about um, doing photography as a task, it is a big subject and it's something you have to explore quite a lot. It's not something you can just take one selfie, one picture, and then because you like it, start painting. I think you need to experiment a lot to find what works best. So there were lots of things in the blog post, lots of hints and tips to get yourself a really good photo. Now, one of them is composition. So where is that face? Where is that portrait on the photo? We've talked a lot about this because we did a black and white photo earlier on. So um, I won't go into too much detail, but composition, you need to think about where it is in your framing. So you might want it in the first or the last third. So you follow rule of thirds when you're thinking about composition. It's always something that makes a photo or an image look much better than being right in the center. You can see mine is off center. I've cut the face down here. I didn't want to do the entire face. So in the end, it will just add something a bit different to it. So try composition, find out where they are on the, on the image. Try not to get it right in the middle. Um, it just adds a bit more interest. But there's lots of ways to get interest. Another one is the subject itself. So having a smile and not having a smile is dramatically going to change the look of your portrait. Now portrait is representing someone in some way. So the smile, the expression of any kind is going to affect how that image looks on when you're actually doing the painting. So we have to think about this. We have to think about um, poses, uh, something they might be wearing. Um, jewellery, for example, or um, it could be anything. It could be absolutely anything. It could just be a facial expression. It could be their face covered somehow with um, hands, anything. So you've got to as well explore poses and your subject and expressions, looking up, looking down, looking to the side, looking off into the distance. It's all going to give your portrait a mood and a, a feeling about it. So having lots of photos you then get to start to um, choose your favorite and maybe combine two or three at the end that is what art students would be encouraged to do okay to develop this idea before we even start painting framing is a nice one for portraits looking through something looking through a big pipe or looking through a window frame, a door frame, anything like this where it frames. You might have bars looking through a fence and it, you know, it crops some, some of the face so the focus then becomes the eyes. It's, it's all up to you how you do it but as I keep going back to exploring and experimenting is going to be the key to task 11, making sure you then have a photo and a subject that you're really pleased with. Um, the background is also very important in this photo for task 11. Is it blurry? Is it anything in particular? Is it a textured wall? Is it bricks? Is it stone? Um, you know, there's, there's also lots to think about with what is behind. Or are you zoomed in so close? Are you literally just doing the eyes on your uh, portrait? It doesn't have to be heads and shoulders, which is what a lot of students think of straight away with the portrait. It can be anything. You can zoom right in. I haven't got the entire face on, on my one. I wanted to do this so I could show you some skin tones and what you could do to add to the painting itself. But, 
you know, it, it might end up being a nice composition because it's going off the edges, there's not too much background. The atmosphere itself is the fact that I've mixed these colours together. So yeah, there's lots to think about. Um, shadows is, is one of the main things to think about because you want lots of tone in your image. If you're right by a window, you can see here, there's lots of tone. So you have to try and create that. You can do that artificially artificially you can get a lamp you can shine a lamp you can project you can create shadows um, a lot of artists would do this if you think before cameras and electricity maybe they were using candles that might create a completely different mood that you could then paint um, you might have most of the face in complete darkness with just the eye really illuminated so again it's about experimenting with your light and tone and seeing what works you could end up with you know tens of photos couldn't you even a hundred photos to then narrow down so I would always do that especially if you're doing a self-portrait it is nice to have because you've got your own subject haven't you self-portraits are difficult but they're also the most accessible so if you've got your own face at least you can be looking in a mirror and looking really up close if you're working solely from a photo it could still work so you just have to have a really good image so that you can um, yeah work from that so that's task 11 Okay, that's what the blog post was all about. Now, the actual painting itself, it's quite hard to say a definite way to do this because there isn't one. There isn't one. You're all going to be exploring and, um, you know, doing your own style with painting. But the main thing to think about is the colour theory chats that we had, or task eight and nine, where you're looking at where the tones are. Okay, now as you can see, I've got some complementary colours, I always do that, it's, it's my style, but you might find a different way. You could literally look at all the analogous colours on the colour wheel, you could be bringing in all your skin tones, and you could be adding just darker shades of that by adding black and adding browns and getting a really dark tone. Or you could go the other way and use a bright colour that's your complement but you do need to have that colour palette kind of sussed out before you start painting so you're kind of going back to task eight and nine really where you've got all the shades and the main thing is seeing if you can mix the skin tones and create shadow and highlights and what colours that's going to be um, so you can do it realistic by looking at your photo and thinking, right, this is the darker tone and matching it up to the photo. Or you can kind of go that little bit more abstract and create a different mood on your picture altogether. So as you can see, I've got the white skin tone. So lots of white, yellow and a little bit of red will get you the basic skin tone. And then it's up to you if you need to add more yellow, if you need to add more red. It does depend then on what tone you would like to do. But that's white skin tone, white, yellow and a bit of pink. Um, I've then been bringing in blues as you can see. And it will just create a bit of more of a calmer effect by the end. So this is what I'm going for. Um, so we can add some details and I can show you some, some things on how I'm shading, but I'm literally just working with my photo and picking out the highlights and using my yellows, using blue, using... Um, so I've got all the colours that I mix to create my initial tones to then bring in other sh um, tones. Um, but yeah, just think, hand, it's, um, painting is like handwriting. It's, it's your own style and you need to embrace that. The, you can copy artists like we did last time. We copied um, Cezanne, didn't we? Um, because you learn a lot from copying artists, a lot, by literally replicating their uh, style. But you still don't fully replicate because it's like, it's your own version. So it is going to be different. You're just learning from their tips on you know, how they approach art and things. And you do pick up a lot from that. But do embrace the style that's kind of developing, that's personal to you. Maybe you do like more abstract or bright colours. Maybe you'll like something a bit more realistic, let's say. So I'm going to just mix some skin tone here. So I've got my white and my yellow, tiny bit of red. I'm just going to add to this painting. I mean, I'm just working. I haven't really got too much of a plan, to be honest. I've just been going with it. So... 
I'm looking at my, so this is going to be quite dark. Now I'm using gouache. I've, I've, I've been using this for most of our lessons, haven't I? Um, again, you just, you might want to explore with different um, paints, different media, just to see what works for you. But those of you that maybe I haven't seen my other lessons, the reasons why I use gouache is it's a, you get bright colours <laughs> and it's a bit of a mixture between acrylic and watercolour. So I like that. I like working with watercolours, but um, I'm not too good with the transparent nature of it. I like it to be a bit bolder. So I get a bit of um, both worlds, really. Best of both worlds. Because you can add water. It's quite forgiving in that way. There's a bit of tone there, so I'm just going to add a bit of yellow. You see, I'm just building up. Now, th there's a lot to do still, and you have to persevere a lot with art and not give up too too soon, which many of my students do. They'll think, oh, no, it's, it's not going right. But the thing is with acrylics um, and gouache, it is forgiving. So you can, you know, keep layering. And if something doesn't work... It's not going to matter because you can cover it over. There's been many times I've put too much dark tone in and then I've had to go back and just layer over the top. And in time, it will come together. So, patience. Okay, you have to be patient with your art sometimes. I've got lots of bright here. I've got the edge of the chin here. You see, just go right up with the tones and just try and... match so I've got my yellows all the different skin tones I've got peaches in there whites and I have got a bit of blue because then I can add a bit of white to that to make it um to make it lighter so the blue doesn't dominate in some areas as you can see you just build into it if I feel it needs to be a bit lighter we can go back in with some white Always make sure you've got a clean, um, clean water, okay? Always make sure you've got clean water. Because, um, yeah, you, you're mixing that colour of your water into your paint and it will change the colour. So lots and lots of water changes throughout this. I might go and in, dip into a bit of the eye. The eyes are always great fun because they're really going to give your port. It's going to come... As soon as I put black in here, you'll see it will... Um, really transform this painting but look closely at reflections and if there is one then do it be brave make sure there is a big um bright reflection in the eye if there is one in your picture okay be true to the image so we started with observational drawing for this reason to really see see if you could really see what is inside you know in the details Portraits are probably one of the hardest because your brain, I'm knowing that this is an eye, the left side of my brain is telling me, you're drawing an eye, you're drawing an eye. So while I'm painting, I think, right, this is just a black pupil, you know, I, I see them all the time, I know what they look like. But you really have to look at your photo because there are reflections in there. There's a little bit, a hint of blue for me in my pupil here, in my image, so I'm going to pop that in there. Oh, you can't really see that on the image, but there is a bit of blue in there. I'm going to go around the edges with some colour now. Now, I'm not going to overdo it with the colour. There's a lot of reflection, so I, I don't want to lose that. So, now I'm not using any special equipment. Obviously, the better the brushes you have, the nicer the paint. You're going to get different effects, aren't you? You, you know. Oh, dog's growl. But I'm not using anything special. These brushes aren't expensive. These are just, you know, your very, very basic ones. But obviously it's then harder for detail. If I had a better brush now, I'd probably get this finer detail much neater. Right, so I want a bit of a blue outline to this eye. <laughs> it's 
So yeah, we're combining combining lots of things today. We're, we're going right back to task one with observation. We've done portrait proportions as well because obviously you've got to sketch this out and it's very easy to sketch again what you think uh, it looks um, a face's proportions are, but it's quite mathematical. You know, the eyes should be in the center. Okay, now I can, can you can see on my canvas it isn't, but it's central in terms of the bottom of the chin to where the top of the head would be. The eyes are right in the middle. So we talked about that in an earlier task on layouts because you need to know a bit of mass behind a portrait because. Um, <coughs> Because, yeah, you can easily, um, you, can, you can easily draw what you think is there with a portrait and what's, you know, is not actually the way it is. So, um, having the knowledge of those actual uh, proportions of a face are really going to uh, help get it accurate, you know. I want this to stay, so it's too. See, I've got blue on my brush, so I'll wash that away. I want to keep it quite bright because there was a lot of reflection there. So, this white is kind of going to stay there. This is where the lovely nature of gouache will come in because I can use my just some water now to just get a bit more. Into there. So you can see the eyes coming together. I've already got a bit of shadow around there. It needs a lot more work. There's still a lot of shadow to come in. So I'm not giving up yet. Just keep going. I just want to get some. There is a lot of shadow. You've got to be brave with the eyes. There's lots of shadow casting from the top down, so you have to be wary of that because of the eyelid. It's very dark at the top. Now, it needs to come together because it's got to be much darker around the outside. So, I'm going to get some black in there. I'm going to get my brush to as much of a point as possible to get this drawn in. Now, I went a bit darker with the pencil first. So I could really see where this black paint was going to go. See, coming together. But this is this is quite detailed. I'm drawing here on A3 paper. I would recommend to go as big as you can, really, and try not to go. Um, just in a small sketchbook all the time. We'll do some other work in the future where we're really um, using much bigger paper. But with paint, I think A3 is a good size just to practice. You get the idea anyway. Everyone's going to have a different photo that they're working from, so it's always going to look that bit different for everyone. Have you got the eyelid? No, I'm not going to worry too much about eyelashes. I mean, you can do, but eyelashes are quite tricky, as you know. So, um, it all depends on the effect that you want. I mean, I've just done it dark, okay? They are there, but this, this photo doesn't have lots of makeup or anything like that. There's a couple of um, wispy eyelashes down on this bottom edge here, so you can bring them in. So I can work a bit into that afterwards. Now, painting.
painting you might just want to use paint but sometimes my art students might want to bring in another media to make it really refined maybe some pencil crayon very very sharp pencil crayons to work in some detail there's nothing stopping you making this mixed media you don't always have to stick to paint so you know if you feel you just want a bit more detail and the the brush isn't working for you then do bring in something else there are just there's no rules it's you creating what you're seeing on your photo in your image and the best way to do that the great thing about this exercise really the reason this is in our learning is is to mix the colors and to get the tones that's your that's your main focus really can you mix the tones to create a self portrait and if you followed the portrait proportions lesson if you followed the observation lessons and developed you know being able to see an object using the right side of your brain then you know your your painting is going to you know be a success So some paintings you might see, they, you know, they try and get all the detail of the hair. Mine's a bit more of an impression. It's the style that I like to work in. It's, it's not absolutely um, realistic. I don't want to do every strand of hair. Okay, you stick that, I use that with graphite. Because I like my graphite pencils where I can really get the detail. I'm not going to try and do that with paint. I want to create this really soft look that's quite smooth with all these different colours, with the blues and yellows into there. So it's more of an impression, so I'm not going to be too worried about trying to get um, every bit of detail, every hair, you know, like the eyelashes and things. Like, go ahead, I'm going to get some water in there. It's on textured paper, it doesn't always go into the fibres of the paper, so you might need a bit of water to help you along, which you can't do with acrylics. Acrylics will be much heavier, you'd have to use them much thicker so you can layer and be brave with um, how you with how you apply your acrylic paint. But this being a little bit watercolour like, it can be quite smooth. I'll leave a bit of white there so there's a bit of reflection on the brow. I can add a bit more shadow to this, there's still more that I need to add to this but as I say you you put just one bit down and then you work into it okay this isn't done I can see there's you know there's bits of shadow underneath and as you see if I go too dark okay so I've, I've done that too dark down there and what's wonderful about gouache I just get some water on there and it will blend there we go that's what I like about gouache. Okay, there's still more to do. I can keep working on this and you can watch. But um, you get the idea, right? You just, you've got to work out what your tones are. I would do little paint samples, do a tonal scale for your painting before you start. Work out what are my light, light colours going to be, what are the darkest tones going to be, and then every time you see them in the photo, you can then apply them to your painting. So um, I'll keep going with this, and maybe, you know, I can always get on tomorrow and show you how I'm finishing this off and touching it up. Maybe I'll get some pencil cranes too and work into it to show you just how great that um, that is. But uh, for those of you doing skin tone, because you're right at the beginning of learning how to draw and paint maybe, then it's white, yellow and pink. Or white, yellow and red, okay? But again, you might want to explore a little bit, okay? But on mine, see that's gone a bit greeny, a bit yellow. I don't mind, I don't mind. I'm going to work into this. I can just add more white as I when I like, I can add a bit more pink. So the acrylic way is that you can mix on the canvas. You can, you know, you can make your colours mix on here. So it doesn't matter, okay? And then you can just start blending. So I want it to be much darker over here. Now this side's gone much too dark. Ooh, I want to keep um, this side light. So I need to add lots more white now. Get some water in there. Oh, it's dripping. It'll be like Christy Anglico at this rate. 
Anyone know Chrissy Anglica? Her portraits are amazing. We're going to go back very soon to looking at um, artists and learning from them and you'll get to choose another artist. I've got lots of examples for you which are post because this task is about mixing tones and putting all your colour theory and observations and things into practice and working with a photo. Okay, so that's kind of the objective, but to get a more um, personal and, you know, a, a more stylized way of painting, because I know you're copying me, but we can copy together and lots more portrait artists and learn from them. You've got Frida Kahlo, you've got Chuck Close. I mean, there, there are just loads. Van Gogh. The list goes on and on. And you will find an artist that you do really like that you could then work from. Okay? You can see. It's just all blending back in. There's never a mistake. You can always just go over it. I can just keep going over this now until it all blends back in. And what's wonderful? Get some water on there. Keep working into it. Okay, so you get the idea. I don't think there's much more for me to show you really. It's just a case now of you going and exploring colour and getting your photo from the last task from task 11. Okay, think about composition because things like that, the basic stuff when you first start, um, you need the good drawing to begin with, don't you? You can't you know, just start your artwork with a bad photo, you're kind of setting yourself up for it not to work. Maybe you do just want, you know, this section of a face, this tiny little section blown up even bigger to work on that. There are no rules. It's If it's a self-portrait, it's just how you want to express your yourself and how you want the viewer to see it when they um, when they then look at it. I mean, some self-portraits are obvious and they have an obvious meaning. Maybe they're, you know, there's an, there's an obvious emotion that's been uh, created in the image. Sometimes it's very obvious. Sometimes it's very personal to the artist. And without an explanation from the artist, maybe we don't fully understand it. But you sometimes just take from art what, whatever, whatever you feel, whatever it makes you think or feel. You can see how I'm blending this, right? I'm working into it. It's very yellowy, but that was just, you know, how I mixed the paint and it's kind of blending in with the style of the rest of the image, having these tones. I, I don't always stick to realistic tones. I like to play around with them. So, um, so there you go. There's portrait painting, but as I say, it's a handwriting. You, you develop it however you wish. I think the main focus is, can you mix tones and can you get from light to dark? in a portrait we haven't done that yet we've done it in charcoal if you look back we've done so we've done black and white photography we've done a charcoal version of this learning how to use charcoal we've done portrait proportions to see how things um, should work in proportion and then we looked at um, the photography okay earlier this week and now the painting as you can see slowly things are building on and on on top of each other so good luck with your painting feel free to post it onto the the page to share i'll keep going on this and post maybe um some different stages of it and how it's actually developing and um yeah we'll catch up again maybe towards the end of the week when we go on to the next task so look out for the next event can't wait to see you all there thanks for watching and goodbye everyone see you soon